Assignment 7C. What are we doing with Assignment 7C? We're going to look for the file that contains Chapter 6 from Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass. So I've put um, in the comments below, if you don't have uh, it re your files ready, I put a link there to my drive, and you're going to uh, go for the Humpty Dumpty text. So that link should take you right there. Otherwise, go into your assignment folder and get the text file, txt, called Humpty Dumpty. You open it up, this is what it looks like. It's this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to save the file as a Python program. So we're going to go save as, and we're going to type assignment7c.py. Click File, Save As, and put it in your folder. So I call it assignment7c.py, and I change this to All Files, and I just click Save. So now I have it up here as assignment7c. 7c.py. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a string value to a variable named Humpty. So it tells me in this tip, use three quotation marks in a row to, to start and end the multi-line string. So I click up here, come enter a couple times, I type in here Humpty equals three quotation marks. One, two, three. So now I come all the way to the bottom. Probably control and will take me there. And I click and enter. And I just put in my three quotation marks again. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to write code that uses a count function to count the number of periods in the Humpty string. Then use the print function to print the answer, including explanatory text so the n user knows what the number means. So now I'm going to write print Inside my um, parentheses, I'm going to write total number of sentences. This is what I want the re reader to read. So put a comma in there. Now what's my var variable? My variable is called Humpty. I put a period in there. Now what I want to do, I want to count. Let me put parentheses again. What am I counting? I'm counting periods. So I'm going to put parentheses around a period. The next thing I need to do is to find a split set sentence variable and assign it a value that splits the string at the periods. So I'm going to come down a line and I'm going to name my split sentence variable split sentence. And I'm going to go use my variable Humpty. And what I want Humpty to do, I want it to use replace. Well, what I want to replace? I want it to replace slash n. You'll remember that's our symbol for new line. Quotation marks around slash n. Then put a blank and comma. And what are we replacing it with? Just a space. 
so I'm going to put quotation marks around a blank space. So now I'm going to split, put the split command in there. So I'm going to put dot split. Since that's a function, of course, it takes the parentheses. So what I'm going to split it with? A period, right? So I put quotation marks around the period. Now what I need to do is write a print function to print out the number of elements in the split sentence list. I want to include explanatory text so the user knows what this number means. So now I'm going to add a print function. What do I want to print? Well, I want to tell the user that this is the number of elements in the sentence list. Put my quotation marks there and I write the number of elements in the sentence list. So now what do I want to list? I put a comma. So what am I listing? Length is len. Length of what? The split sentence variable. So I put in here split it's my variable split underscore sentence that I defined in the sentence before. So there we go. Next thing I want to do is I want to write code that defines a split word variable and assign it a value that splits a Humpty string at each space into list elements. This splits the string into a list of word elements. So I click enter. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to have me a uh, variable called split word. So I had split sentence above, so I'm going to call make a variable split word. So split word. And we're going to put in there Humpty split. So what am I splitting the text into? Well, I'm going to find out how many words there are. What defines a word? Every time you see a space, you're going to assume that's a word. So I'm just going to put a space between quotation marks. We'll go down to the next line. Next, we're going to write a print function that prints the number of elements in the spl split word list. And we're going to exclude, we're going to include explanatory text so the user knows what this number means. So now I'm going to use my print command and inside my parentheses I'm going to tell the user this is the number of elements in the word list. Now I'm going to put a comma in there and what are we going to fill that with? We're going to, this time we're going to do instead of the length of the split sentence, we're going to use the length of the split word variable. Of course, we end our closing parentheses there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do with our code is to slice the entire split word list and stride through it with a stride number three and print every third element in the list. So now I come down the next line and I'm going to go print. Print what? We're going to go into the split word variable. Now I'm going to put brackets in here. What's the bracket for? I want every third element. So I just put in two colons and I put in the number three. This should bring me up every third word. And I come to the end of the line and I click enter. My next chore is to write the code that counts and prints the number of times Alice, One, Fish, and Humpty Dumpty appear in the text. And I want to include explanatory text so that user knows what each number means. So the first thing I'm going to do is print the number of times Alice occurs. So I'm going to print Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is explain. I'm looking. I'm counting Alice. After the comma, I'm going to go into my uh, variable called Humpty Count and count any time Alice shows up. 
And what I want to do with Humpty, I want to count. And what am I counting? I'm counting the occurrence of Alice. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to account the number of times for one. So just like I almost word for word, except instead of Alice, I put one here and one in the quotation marks. Next, we're going to look for the word count for fish. There you go. And the only thing different from one and Alice is that you put fish in there. See that? You can do a copy and paste and copy and paste each line in here and just change the one word. Okay, then we do the same thing for Humpty Dumpty. And we don't do anything special for two words. We just put quotation marks around the two words. See, there's Humpty Dumpty. So that takes us to the end of this command. The next instruction tells us to write code that gives the index of the first time the word Alice appears in the Humpty Dumpty string. And then we're supposed to print this number with explanatory text. So I put in here print. Quotation marks. What am I printing? I can first tell the user Alice first appears in the text at index. And then what do I want? I put the, my comma in here. I want Humpty. That's what we're calling the text. And this time we're looking for the index value. So I'm going to put in here index. That's what I'm looking for. And what's what's going to be the word we're looking for here? What index? It's, it's wherever Alice is, appears for the first time. So I type in here Alice. And then I'm going to close it with my closing parentheses. So now the next thing it wants me to do is save and run the code to make sure it works. So now I'm going to run my Python code. Right click it. I'm going to edit with idle. Then whatever version of idle I have. Here we go. Let me run it. And there we go. <laughs> yep, that total number of elements in the word list, 2,000. <laughs> 973, okay, total number of sentences, 163, uh, total number of sentences in the sentence list, 164, and a long list, right? Okay, so we have the word count for Alice, 57, the word count for 1 is 24, the word count for fish is 5, the word count for Humpty Dumpty is 47, and Alice first appears in the text, I have in the test, <laughs> at index 583. Then make sure that you rename your assignment, assignment 7C, plus your full name, and enter it into the Dropbox, and you're done.